The legend says that thousands of years ago, creators and people peacefully coexisted in a single world. Once people, enslaved by the desire to seize power, started a war that put a stigma on the further existence of mankind. As we know, King Zhou has become special, as he has not only power, but also power, incomparable with other people. Secluded with concubine Daji, Zhou makes love. Servants and guards ask that no one enter the chambers, but one official disobeyed the order and entered the king's bedroom. The nine-tailed fox attacked the insolent and literally tore him apart in order to absorb the flesh and please his ruler. Meanwhile, outside the city, several warriors in a metal wagon head towards the Zhou kingdom and discuss a strategy to free the invisible people and their leader. At some point, the mighty and ancient magician Jiang Zia appears in front of them and tells that once the king of Zhou allowed the black dragon to take possession of his body in order to gain unlimited power. The great elder of the Unseelie tribe is the only one who knows how to defeat a strong enemy, so a group of warriors must free him at all costs. Giving good advice, Jiang flies away on a huge crane. In the city, King Zhou and his concubine hold a festival where people dance, have fun, and enjoy freedom. Daji prepared a special gift for the sovereign, the captive leader of the invisible people, who is able to tell about the past and predict the future. Meanwhile, a group of warriors stealthily sneak into the king's castle and prepare to attack. Ji Fei suggests waiting for the changing of the guard, since at this moment the guards are most vulnerable. Li Zhenzi hears the call of the invisible people and, disobeying the request, hurries to their aid. Faced with several dozen guards, the warriors deal with them without any problems and find an empty cell in which the invisible people are actually hiding. Ji Fei forbids Lei Genzi from using the power of the adepts, but as a member of the Wing Adept tribe, he uses magic to destroy the metal bars of the prison cell and free the invisible people. His powers draw Shen's attention, Gong Bao, since it was this person who once took the life of Li Zhenzi's father and keeps his wings in his room. Realizing that outsiders had invaded the kingdom, Shen Gong Bao and his black leopard go to the prison cells. Zhou tries to find out his future and asks the great elder to show him what awaits him in a few years. In the prediction, the king sees him begging for mercy and then turns to dust, and this causes him to have a fit of anger. Daji decides to punish the prophet and orders his eyes to be torn out, since it is in them that all the power of the head of the invisible people tribe is contained. A group of warriors tries to evacuate the prisoners, but they are surrounded by guards and hundreds of archers. They take the lives of several invisible people, but the children of this people have unique powers that help get rid of the guards. Using their powers, they teleport the group to another safer location. Meanwhile, the magician Zhang arrives at the festival and stops time in order to free the invisible chief and help his tribe's children escape. The warriors make a boat out of shields and go down the water, realizing that Shen Gong Bao and the Black Leopard are chasing them. Ji Fa and Lei Genzi delay to try to stop him, but realize that the forces are unequal and flee for their lives. Realizing that there is no escape from the pursuer, Lei Genzi again uses his strength and destroys the metal wall, creating an impenetrable barrier. Stopping, he tells Ji Fei that in the distant past, his father was killed by an invading army that massacred most of the wing adepts. His old man lost the ability to fly as the enemy tore off his wings and sent him to the next world. Lei Genzi is not going to give up and wants to return to help the magician. At the same time, Zhang communicates with the king and realizes that Daji is not affected by the time stop. The nine-tailed fox attacks him and casts a magic spell that causes the mage to get younger every time he uses his power. The great elder of the invisible people tribe tries to save Zhang and sacrifices one eye by throwing it to Daji. The woman does not stop there and tries to take the life of the prophet. Li Jianzi and Ji Fa return, helping Jiang escape. A crane also flies here, which saves the Trinity, who managed to take the second eye of the prophet before escaping. The warriors return home, after which King Ji Chang and Jiang use the chief's eye to find a way to defeat King Zhou and the black dragon that lives inside him. The magician learns that this can be done with the help of the Sword of Light, which can only be used by a special person who has become the Golden Dragon. It must be found and used before the Three Suns converge, otherwise the Black Dragon will be released, and no one will be able to defeat it. 
Daji uses the second eye of the Prophet and learns the same information, realizing that the enemies must be stopped at all costs. At the moment of using the power, Jiang becomes younger and realizes that the curse reverses his age, which means that he will soon turn into a child unable to help. Lei Jianzi tries to spread his wings again and jumps off a cliff, but remembers what happened to his father and his homeland, because of which he suffers another setback. Ji Fei supports his comrade and asks him not to give up, because only faith will help overcome all obstacles and return long-lost wings. A little later, Lei Jianzi volunteers to look for the sword. Zhang summons a red egg from a block, from which a mischievous little prankster named Nadza emerges. Legenzi should also take three sacks from the Source of Life with him, each of which will provide assistance at the most appropriate moment for this. Shen Gongbao constructs and animates a robot named Blue Butterfly to find Legenzi and relay information about his activities. Soon, the volunteer goes to the wasteland and does not understand where to go. An omniscient one-eyed blade of grass crawls out of the first bag to help, which gives advice to Legenzi and directs her on the right path. A little later, he again notices Nadza, who was in the sand nearby. A conflict ensues between the man and the baby, but is interrupted by the legendary desert centipede. She is chasing a blade of grass, so Legenzi and Nadza toss it to each other to get some rest. Realizing that it will not be possible to break away from the persecution, the man takes the life of the centipede. Afterwards, Nadza steals a second magical pouch, inside of which he finds a baby dragon prince. The mischievous kid starts to get arrogant, so the shrimp exhales gas on him, as a result of which Nadza loses consciousness and turns into an adult man. Waking up, he tries to escape, but Legenzi persuades him to find the Sword of Light, promising to find the lost fire wheels. Trusting the map, the men leave the immense space and find themselves near a swamp with a cluster of columns. Here they notice a hermit manipulating the sand with the help of magic. Nadza tries to steal a precious thing, which angers the hermit. The trio get into a fight, from which the stranger emerges the loser. It soon becomes clear that this is Erlang Shen, a Chinese god with a third eye. The third bag contains Erlang's faithful dog, which Lei Genzi gives him as a gift. Thanking for the help, the hermit goes in search of the golden armor. Lei Genzi and Nadza have a magical boat at their disposal, so they go to the port. Separated, they look around to see if all is well here. Legenzi notices a beautiful girl entertaining children with glowing butterflies and uses magic to help her. He touches the girl and falls in love with her. Not suspecting that the blue butterfly is an automaton that transmits information to its owner, Shen Gong Bao is in full control of the girl and gives new orders for her to pursue Legenzi and notify of important finds. A little later, Legenzi meets with a sorceress who uses dreams to read minds. At some point, she traps the man, but the smart plant wakes him up. Legenzi and Blue Butterfly, who has found it again, steal the artifact and run to the water. After meeting up with Nadza, the trio use the ship to hastily leave the port. He can swim to any place that the owner will indicate to him. At the same time, a person with the strongest mind and desire can control the ship. While on the ship, Nadza mocks the shrimp dragon prince, after which he is distrustful of Blue Butterfly. The kid uses the gas to put Naz to sleep again and return him to his baby state. Enjoying the peace and tranquility, Blue Butterfly and Lei Genzi marvel at the sunrise. At some point, Shen Gong Bao takes away all the memories from the girl and reminds her that she is just a toy in his hands. Lei Genzi tries to resist this and uses magic to keep some of the memories in the girl's head. Soon the ship is in the East Sea and it becomes clear that the ship is being driven by the little dragon prince, as he has the strongest desire to return home. The Dragon King senses his father's approach and sends a giant octopus to fetch his son and the abusive Nadza. A harmful prankster, once in the Sea Palace, is not going to obey the king and asks for the return of the fiery wheels. The Sea Dragon King of the East Sea orders the guards to take the life of Nadza, but he easily copes with opponents. The baby urinates on them and emits gases literally tearing the crabs apart. The octopus tries to escape, but he also fails to escape from the annoying Nadza. Realizing that he cannot be defeated, the tormented king gives the fire wheels to a grown-up male, Nadza, to leave his lands. Meanwhile, the ship arrives at the Air Temple, the former home of Lei Genzi, which was in ruins after the war. 
He realizes that the Sword of Light is there and uses magic to retrieve it from the ruins. Shen Gong Bao and his fleet of flying ships are coming here to get their hands on a powerful weapon. The guards are unable to get through the fast-moving rings, so Shen captures Legenzi. Blue Butterfly is in love with a man and takes the sword in an attempt to trade it for Legenzi's life. Drawing her sword, she destroys the rings, which causes an explosion. Legenzi tries to save the girl and his wings grow again. She is wounded and is about to lose her life, so in the end she asks to show her the sunset. After saying goodbye to Beloved, Legenzi leaves the girl's wooden mannequin on the island and takes the sword with. The three sons begin to converge, and Daji and King Zhou attack Jifa City, surrounding it with a fleet of flying ships. Zhang tries to use magic to stop the enemy, but continues to get younger, gradually turning into a little boy. Legenzi with the Sword of Light, Nadza with fire wheels, and Erlong, who has found the golden armor, rush back to save the kingdom of Ji. In a difficult battle, Father Ji Fa and Shen converge, after which they fall into the abyss. Thanks to the wings, Legenzi saves the leader, and Daji revives the enemy, turning him into a terrible monster. Erlong, Nadza, and Legenzi try to keep the mad Shen at bay, but the forces are unequal, and the three of them struggle to defend the kingdom. Meanwhile, the small and stupid Jang descends into the dungeon and is captured by the nine-tailed fox. The trinity of warriors deprive Shen of weapons, but wounds the king with a fragment. With his last breath, the father gives the sword of light and command of the lands to his son, begging him to go to the source of life. Listening, Jifa hurries there and dives into the water to load his sword. He soon transforms into a golden dragon and destroys the monster Shen with a single swing of his sword. Jifa gathers forces to attack the enemy's kingdom and uses magic to drive the fortress towards the lands of Zhou. Meanwhile, the enemy finally turns into a black dragon and having captured the baby Zhang prepares for war. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked and subscribed. See you soon.